it is unacceptable for a, a just society to return serial killers back into society. You worried that might happen? Absolutely. Sadly, we all know Sharon Tate for her death more than for her career she built when she was still alive. And that's only because of how disturbing her murder actually was. Sharon was a great actress and a pretty face, but that wasn't all. Unfortunately, her life and career were cut short before she really got to show her talent. And we have all the details about her death thanks to Sharon's sister. So who was Sharon Tate and why was she murdered? And who was the person behind it? Sharon Tate was born in Texas in 1943, and she was a star from the start. Sharon started her career as a beauty queen when she entered pageants ever since she was six months old, when she even won the title Miss Tiny Tot. It all went up from there. In 1959, she won five pageants in one year and was then crowned Miss Richland in Washington the following year. This girl was definitely going places. Unfortunately, her journey as a pageant queen was cut short when she had to move to Italy with her family. Obviously, her beauty was recognized there as well. People named her the prettiest American in Italy and even voted for her as prom queen. She definitely deserved that title. But Sharon had her eyes set on something else. She wanted to be an actress, and obviously she did everything in her power to reach her goal. Even though she was far from Hollywood, she found small roles here and there before scoring the big ones. But she knew she couldn't do anything from that far away. So when her dad was assigned to work in California, she was ecstatic. Sharon didn't even wait for the whole family to move there together. She wanted to go first, and she did. I was shy and bashful when I reached Hollywood. I only had just enough money to get by, and I hit hiked a ride on a truck to the office of an agent whose name I had, Sharon revealed. That very first day, he sent me to the cigarette commercial job. A girl showed me how it should be done, you know, taking a deep, deep breath and looking ecstatic. That was the beginning and end of her cigarette commercial career because she fainted from all the nicotine. But that didn't matter. She had bigger goals than that. In 1963, she got noticed by the head of Filmway's production studio, Martin Ransahoff. He knew what potential Sharon had from the moment he laid eyes on her. He told Sharon he was going to make her a star and offered her a seven-year contract. This was the start of her career. Obviously, she had a lot of work to do and many acting and singing classes to attend, but it was all worth it. Her first parts in TV were series like Mr. Ed, The Beverly Hillbillies, and The Man from Uncle. But her first big role was playing a witch in 1967's Eye of the Devil. Not only did this movie kickstart her career, but this is also where she met her husband, Roman Polanski, and this relationship only helped her advance even more. He even helped her get a role in his movie, The Fearless Vampire Killers. After this, she really started making a name for herself, but it wasn't until the Valley of the Dolls that the whole world started recognizing the name Sharon Tate. Sharon had a very short career, but her role as Jennifer North in Valley of the Dolls was definitely her most interesting role. Sadly, her last movie was 12 Plus One, which was released in 1969, and that's the last movie that Sharon left behind for us to remember her by. Sharon's acting was great, and no matter how short her career was, her legacy will live forever. So what happened? Who robbed us of the beautiful Sharon Tate? The night of August 8th, 1969 was a pretty normal night for Sharon. She was pregnant and waiting for her husband, Roman, to come back from Europe. Sharon was expected to go to a dinner party, but decided on a quiet dinner with her friends instead. That's why she and her friends, Jay Sebring, Wojtek Frykowski, and Abigail Folger, went out for a quick bite at Sharon's favorite restaurant and came back home together around 10. Little did they know that they were walking into their own death trap. Charles Manson is the man behind what happened next. He ordered Tex Watson, Susan Atkins, Patricia Kren Ben Winkle and Linda Kasabian to break into the house and, quote, totally destroy everyone in that house as gruesome as you can, make it a real nice murder, just as bad as you've ever seen, and get all their money. The first person to get murdered by this group was Stephen Parent, who just happened to be there at the wrong time. He had gotten out of his car and into the driveway when he was attacked with a knife and shot four times. After making sure Stephen was dead, they continued inside and killed the rest. There was a lot of stabbing involved. Sebring was only stabbed seven times compared to Frykowski, who was stabbed 51 times, followed by 28 stabs to Folger. They were also shot and bludgeoned in the head until the three of them were dead for good. Frykowski was the only one who actually woke up for a while while the murderers were still there, and he managed to ask Watson what he was doing there. Watson answered, I'm the devil, and I'm here to do the devil's business. Creepy, right? As for Sharon, she was stabbed 16 times, which was more than enough to kill both her and her baby, but they wanted to torture her even more, so they wrapped a rope around her neck and hung her over a rafter. Reportedly, while she was being stabbed, she begged for them to at least save her unborn baby, but obviously they didn't care. Her cries were answered by an angry Atkins who replied, I don't care about you or your baby. The murderer, Atkins, talked about this moment herself. I could have, I felt nothing. I felt absolutely nothing for her. Um, 
as she begged for her life and for the life of her baby. And before they left, they grabbed Sharon's blood and wrote pig outside of the house with it. And they were left there dead, only for the maid to find them the next morning. That must have been a terrifying sight to see, definitely one she'll never forget. After the police and Sharon's husband were notified about this horrifying murder, the investigations began. The whole world was shocked by this unexpected death. After searching the house and finding tons of drugs, the police believed this was just a drug deal that went wrong, or the victims had gotten paranoid because of the drugs, which somehow how could have led to the murders. That obviously wasn't the case, and the case remained unsolved until December of that same year when the police arrested Charles Manson and his team for reasons unrelated to Sharon's death. But after some investigating, they found out they were the real murderers of Sharon Tate and her friends. Back then, they were all sentenced to death for the crimes they committed. But as the laws changed through the years, the death sentence was replaced with life in prison instead, which isn't nearly enough for what those monsters really deserve. But what relation did Charles have to Sharon? Why would he kill someone so innocent. Some people think he only did it because he wanted to do a crime that would shock the world, that the world would have to stand up and take notice. If that was the case, they definitely reached their goal. The death of Sharon is still mentioned to this day, and everyone knows about the Manson clan and their murders. But that wasn't what happened. It seems that the real reason might be that Manson sent his team to the house to kill the previous owners and not Sharon and her friends. Terry Melcher used to live there, and he was a music producer who met Manson a couple of years back. Apparently, Charles was aspiring to become a singer himself, Himself, but Melcher wasn't impressed with his talents. Clearly, he didn't take that rejection well and just cry about it, as any other normal person would have. So we know what happened next. Charles wanted to get revenge for that and ended up murdering the wrong people. Sadly, these weren't his only victims. And Sharon's sister, Deborah, spent a lot of time trying to uncover more of their murders. She was only 16 when Sharon died, which was obviously very traumatizing, and she wanted justice for her sister. Everyone knew that Charles was responsible for plenty of deaths. He even bragged to his cellmate about how he killed 35 people on his own, but there was never any proof of those murders. Deborah was set on finding out more, so she wrote to Charles while he was in prison, and surprisingly, he replied. She definitely didn't expect to communicate with her sister's murderer, but here's what he said. He was writing about how he was an outlaw, and that he lives by outlaw rules, meaning he would never rat on any of his brothers and sisters, even though some of them had done it to him, Deborah said about Manson's reply. But he drew me a little picture that was an exact replica of the Paramount Mountains, the mountain range surrounding Barker Ranch, where Manson Manson was hiding out after the murders and eventually captured. She thought this was his way of answering her questions about additional murders. She believed that the X marks on the drawings were places where he buried his other victims, but after a lot of digging, no human remains were found anywhere near that place. Maybe Charles was just messing with Deborah, since he never really felt bad about the murders. So now that he was in prison, he had to find a new way to mess with people. That doesn't mean Deborah ever stopped fighting for justice. And when she heard that Manson's family was seeking parole for him, she knew she had to do something to stop them. So she got over three 350,000 signatures on a petition to help keep all of the murderers in prison where they belong. I'm going to keep fighting like hell to ensure these people remain behind bars, Deborah said. My mom asked me to continue this work for her, so that's what I'm going to do. And she managed to do just that. Charles rotted in prison until the very last day of his life. He died in 2017, which was a lot more than he deserved. He cut Sharon's life short when she didn't do anything to deserve it. At least all the people responsible for the disturbing murder were punished for it. If you liked this video, make sure to watch this other one one, two.